What's up, Internet? My name's Ian Bloom. Uh, welcome to a really different edition of Nerd Finance. Obviously, there's a lot going on in the world right now, and so what I wanted to make sure to take some time to do is talk about um, why the coronavirus is important for the financial community um, and also what some of the changes are and how they affect individuals and small businesses. Now, keep in mind that this was a presentation that I've given, so some of the content on here is going to be a little bit static. Um, I gave this presentation a little while ago to my co-working space, and I figured if people at my co-working space had questions about this, probably you guys do too. Um, this is a very different piece of content from what I normally produce. Usually I'm just ranting and raving at a camera from some bullet points or whatever about something funny and nerdy, but given the situation, I figured that maybe this would be a piece of content that people would value. So let's get started. Um, so a disclosure here is that we're going to be talking about some things as they pertain to pieces of legislation and I don't give legal advice, neither does my firm. The purpose of this video is just to help you understand what's going on in the financial world and maybe get out a little bit ahead of it as far as feeling informed. Um, if you're going to make some decisions based on this and it involves difficult decisions, seek financial help, seek legal counsel, all of the things necessary in order to make the decision the best way for you. I can't possibly give you advice over a pre-recorded video like this. So let's talk about what we're going to cover. Um, I started with some changes to unemployment here in North Carolina. Most of my viewership is still local, despite the fact that I hope to talk to nerds of all types. Um, some changes to student loans, tax deadlines, the Small Business Association lending, changes to sick leave, some upcoming changes, and some tips and thoughts and resources. So if you are bored by any of that or you just want to skip to a specific point in the presentation, those are the slides you can look for. Um, unemployment in North Carolina, our governor made some pretty big changes to unemployment recently. Um, basically, they were made with the idea that unemployment should cover more people in this stressful time. Specifically, people in service industries benefit a lot from this. Um, when the laws were to having their orders reduced, they're talking about people like waitresses and delivery drivers who may not be able to receive the tips that they're normally receiving, even though their places of business might be open. So they're severely economically impacted. But effectively, what this does is make it way easier to receive unemployment benefits um, and hopefully makes it so that unemployment benefits apply to more people who will eventually be going back to work after the coronavirus uh, pandemic has gone to a place of control. Uh, student loan changes at the federal level. So first, what I want to do is thank a friend of mine, Jake, who wrote this wonderful article that I pulled most of this text from. Um, I will have a link to his article towards the end of this presentation. Please go give him a follow. He's an incredibly intelligent financial planner and wonderful colleague. Um, student loan interest is waived, but the student loan principal is still due. This means that you may still have to make student loan payments. You can, however, put your student loans into what's called emergency forbearance, which means you're basically putting a pause on your student loans, and that means that they will not accrue interest. Keep in mind this only works with federal and federal agency student loans. It does not work with privately issued student loans. That's important as a distinction. You need to understand which type of student loans you have and what that enables you to do. But then also, for what it's worth, when you do press pause on your student loans using emergency forbearance, if you're using uh, public service loan forgiveness or any of those types of programs, it does put a pause on your payment schedule and therefore how soon it will be until your loans are forgiven. So just keep that in mind. But if you do need to retool your cash flow, given what's going on right now, putting your loans into emergency forbearance, at least the federal ones, will mean that you're basically just hitting pause with no specific consequences. Tax deadline extensions. Um, the federal filing and tax payment deadlines were moved to June 15th. This is important because it means that you may have an extra two months to get your taxes done, but keep in mind that some states, including my own, will still charge you interest during that time <laughs> if you don't make the tax payments, which is weird, but they did at least waive the fee. So if for some reason you definitely can't make your tax payments and you owe before June, um, I guess 
don't do it and accept the loans. Um, but that being that, or accept the interest, excuse me. But that being said, if you would normally get a refund or not really owe very much, I would still file your taxes on time. And even for people who owe, I would, I would at least calculate the amount that you might owe ahead of time so that you know how much the interest will accrue if you're in a state where that happens. SBA disaster loans. Uh, the Small Business Association changed their lending practices quite a bit. The goal for these loans is to provide capital to keep businesses open and at least allow them to reopen their doors after some of this, uh, this economic isolation has passed. Uh, the Secretary of the Treasury implied though it is not yet written into law that some of these loans are going to be forgiven as well, which means that you will not have to pay the money back, but it'll be a little while until we know whether that's going to be the case. So don't rely on that. Only take out loans that you can afford as a small business owner. Don't you know be a small business owner with 20000 in revenue and apply for a $100,000 loan. That's going to be difficult. Um, but anyway, nonetheless, make smart decisions. Sick leave due to COVID-19 has some changes. Um, the coronavirus has put some laws into place that will allow employees to take uh, 10 days of sick leave at regular pay if they have evidence they've been exposed to the coronavirus and child care if schools are closed in your area, which they are in most areas now, is up to 10 weeks at two thirds of regular pay. There are caps to this and recognize that the impact of taking all this leave on your employer may mean that if you work for a smaller employer, they could go out of business. Um, the way that they are getting paid back by the federal government for this is via tax credits, which can be refunded or reimbursed earlier using something called a fast funds program, which there's not a lot of detail out on yet. Um, but that does not mean that they're getting an advance from the government that they can then pay you. So just keep that in mind. If half of the staff of a small business is out on leave, then that small business is fronting the leave pay for all of those staff members. Upcoming changes. Uh, the economic stimulus package is being voted on today or soon. <laughs> they have gone back and forth on the exact contents of this package and whether or not it should include certain things, uh, because that's what happens in Congress and the Senate. Uh, payments to individuals in the package um, will be for those who have less than $75,000 a year as individuals or $150,000 a year as couples in income. They're referring to your AGI, adjusted gross income, which would be on your 2018 tax return, by the way, because they can't operate based off 2019 numbers yet because most people have not filed their 2019 tax returns. Uh, payments are expected to be $1,200 per adult that qualifies and $500 per child in those qualifying households. Finally, some places for me to add my own thoughts to this. Um, first off, emergency funds are really important. So if you can maintain that emergency fund, we use three months for couples and six months for individuals as a rule of thumb for how much money to have on hand. Because if you were to suffer job loss or a job change during any period of time, it's good to be able to have that transition time and not have to worry financially. You may want to balloon that for this given period of time if you're in an industry that's expected to be heavily affected by this. Um, if you can, refrain from withdrawing funds from your portfolio by selling investments. Uh, investments are down right now, and so just as a broad strokes, you will get less money for your investments if you sell them now than you will in five years. We should hope that the market goes back up, and therefore, um, it's not usually generally going to be a good idea to withdraw those things now. Um, and if you have a tons of it, extra cash, lucky you, you robber baron, you, um, investing it in the market right now is historically a good idea just based on the fact that investing when things are at a discount is great. Um, but that does not necessarily mean that now is the right time for you. So don't necessarily go throwing all your cash into the market. Focus on things you can control, um, things like refinan refinancing your home or rebalancing your portfolio are things that I put here. Actions that you can take right now that are not impacted by market conditions specifically are going to give you that sense of stability and control back despite the craziness of the time. Um, remember to take care of yourself. Self-care is going to be extra important right now. 
and there are some ideas here to do that. And then also remember to stay social and support each other. I'm doing a lot of Discord gaming with my friend group right now just because, well, frankly, we can't go out and see each other. We're all operating from separate areas of the world and trying to stay sane. And friends help you stay sane. <laughs> so get involved. Um, for Discord gaming or virtual gaming, you can play video games. You could also play things like D&D &D and stuff online using uh, apps like Roll20 or Tabletop Simulator. So... If you are thinking of a board game or a tabletop game or a video game, chances are there's a way for you to play that online with your friends. Here are some resources that I will uh, put on screen. They're basically just an article or a post from each place that I talked about today. This one, um, the student loan changes article, is the one that I quoted earlier from uh, my colleague Jake. And so... Look, look at that if you're dealing with student loan changes. Um, and then the last two things here are my thoughts on what's going on with the market and also um, some links to book a time. If you just want somebody to talk to about this economic stuff, I am happy to have that conversation with you. I never charge for my first appointment and I'm certainly not going to start doing that while everybody is struggling with the changes to both our economy and our lives. So if you need somebody to talk to about something difficult in your life or just ask some questions financially, happy to be there for you. Um, thanks so much for watching. I hope everybody out there supports each other, stays safe, stays healthy, um, and uh, I hope we all get through this sometime soon. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful day.